Welcome back to the channel and today we are going to attempt to do the impossible. We are going to attempt Nathan and I to predict the 2022-2023 EFL Championship. Let's just get straight into it with Nathan, your predictions for the bottom three. Who's going back down to Division 1 this season? Right, so bottom three. God, this is always impossible for us to predict every year. So... Out of the three of puts get relegated, any of them could finish in any other position. I think it's, this year is the hardest um, that we've had in a long while out of any positions. Uh, so 24th, I've gone for Reading. You could have in well impending points deductions come in their way, but look at it this way. Their midfield has been absolutely decimated in the summer. John Swift's gone to West Brom, uh, Josh Laurent's gone to Stoke, and Bruno Moto has gone to Cardiff, yeah. of course. Uh, Jeff Hendricks, Shane Long have been brought in. <laughs> Bit meh. Yeah, Hendrick washed out. Fairly decent in the championship. Mm. He should be a decent addition there. Yeah, it's just concerning for me. Michael Morrison's gone as well, long standing captain, and Paul Lintz as a manager. Says it all. Indeed. Really, uh, the likes of Junior Hoyler has been released as well, hasn't mm, he? That surprises me. And Josh Murphy, they didn't so give him a contract, which is probably a good thing. But yeah, bottom for me, yeah, Reading. 23rd, I have Rotherham. Wouldn't be a championship prediction video without putting Rotherham in the relegation places. Mm -hmm. Paul Wan's done a great job there, rating him as a manager, yeah. how long he's been there. They have lost one or two of their better players to Sheffield Wednesday, I believe, as well. Can't remember the names off the top of the head, but they haven't really strengthened the squad, so 23rd for me. And then 22nd, I've gone black. Paul, they've uh, lost their manager, I believe Neil Critchley has gone to uh, Aston Villa, hasn't mm -hmm. he, to be with Steven Assistant, Gerrard. Yeah. Um, bit of second season syndrome for me this year. Haven't really made any noticeable signings as of yet. You had that 5-0 as well, Peter Brelos at the end of the last season, last day of the season, and you're relying on Gary Medine for goals, even if he's still, uh, I can't even remember at this point. But yeah, Blackpool getting relegated. For me, my bottom of the table, it is a bit of cliche, or you could yeah. say it's, it's a bit lazy, but I've actually gone for Rotherham. As you say, Paul Warren, decent manager, he's been there for over five years now, but I think, yeah, I haven't made a notable... Um, signings as such probably the Rotherham fans will have a bit of a go with me because they have signed the likes of Connor Washington from Charlton Tom Evans etc yeah. Cameron Humphreys from Zule Wagon I don't know bottom for me Reading as you say they've had the, the heart ripped out of their, their midfield Paul Lentz as a manager doesn't really do it no, for me no in the championship great great player but not really cut, cut it, cutting it as a manager um, yeah a lot of players go in out and uh, not too much quality you could say coming in and there is a possibility of more points deductions possibly deserved as well I think with the amount of money they've spent over the years yeah and in, in 23rd bit of a dilemma for me I've been changing this a few times over the last few days but I'm actually going to go for Wigan they had a fantastic season last year um, scoring lots of goals as well Wilkeen from the Latics actually ended up mm -hmm. top scorer last season with some like 28 goals I think it was so yeah I think Wigan and unfortunately they will go down it, it may change it, it could be my mm. 23rd position team who I've put down as Birmingham but looking at the news in the last day or so they have had new investors or it looks like new investors are coming on board so much I damage think, at that club though yeah I think they they will have more of a control than their current owners so yeah, you could see some players coming in there's still a few weeks left in the transfer yeah. window so for me uh, 23rd I'm going to put Birmingham I think they'll survive for the, by the skin of their teeth then they've got Blackpool in 20th as you said they've, they've lost their manager etc second season syndrome perhaps they do have some really good players yeah. up there but uh, in front of goal maybe found a little bit wanting at times in 19th I've actually gone for Sunderland okay they've come up I don't think they're going to do as well as a lot of people are saying they could be pushing up mid table even the playoffs um, they could flex I think they've got a bit of money there obviously decent ground decent stadium and um, they'll have a lot of punters coming through the door so uh, they'll have a, a bit of money to spend possibly mm -hmm. yeah. there so I've gone for Sunderland in 19th position and in 18th position I've gone for the Carrot Crunchers the Wurzels Bristol City Looks like Semego is on a lot of other teams. Semenyo. Semenyo, however you pronounce it, is on a lot of other teams' radar. Feynman front scored a, a lot of goals last season and. Mark Sykes coming in from Oxford has actually uh, he played really well in um, yeah. their friendly the other day as well. But um, 
I think they'll probably start off well, but drop away. And but they they shouldn't re be in any real danger of going down. So the Bristol City 18th position. Yeah. So my 21st, I actually changed last minute on this one. Um, obviously, with the news coming through um, through over the course of the week that Boom and get a takeover, <laughs> then it finally uh, being confirmed um, in the past few days. So. But before that, I was going to put them going straight down. Thankfully, they have been taken over because they are they had some absolutely shocking owners, massive club, and yeah, terrible owners. By the way, I can't stand Boomu. Anyone wondering? Uh, but they just need to freshen up a little bit and sort everything out off the pitch. But I think they'll just about survive. In 20th position, I've gone for Wigan. Yeah, Liam Richardson, great manager. He's been there for about a year now. Done a superb job with that Wigan team. Uh, Will Keane. Great season last year as well. Top scorer. We've also got the likes of Charlie White there. Joe Bennett, a former Premier League player there as well. Um, Magenis and then everyone's favourite, James McLean as well, also in the side. So I think they'd have an all right season, just needs a little bit more to push on. Then in 19th, I have Bristol City. They've been underachieving the last couple of years as well. Uh, just they have, they have the squad there in a way, but they just don't have that thing to push them up the table ever since that car salesman left, of course. You could see them starting well, but they, I feel... They always do. Um, but they need to tighten up the defence as well, and they deserve to be that low in the table for charging £33 for away tickets. <laughs> Moving swiftly on, in 18th, I've got quite a surprising one, but a lot of people are saying the same thing. Uh, Stoke City in 18th, they've had a poor pre season season so far, lost quite a few of the games, won't even mention that Aidan Flint's own goal. Um, I'm calling it now, preview before the end of the video. Michael O'Neill is going to be the first manager sacked this season. Their fans are really not happy uh, with them either. And their squad is just a bit meh, isn't it, to be honest? So that's my 21st to 18th. Moving swiftly on between 17th and 12th, so 17th I've gone for Sunderland. Yeah, they, they, they're going to grind out results for me, being a bit sceptical where, where I want to put them, but they'll, they'll grind out the obviously result. Uh, they've got a good manager in charge and they'll build on the momentum that they had from last season. Expect a few good things from them. I think if they, good stay, signings. if they stay up, that would be a very good season for Sunderland. Yeah, I agree. My, a few of them won't favour up, but they need, it's, it's Sunderland. They need to keep a level head. I mean, Jack Clark from Tottenham's a good sign, I think, as well, personally. Probably calibre at his time at Leeds, too. Then, moving on, we have Q I have QPR in 16th, a lot lower than where I put them last season as well. They've lost Mark Warburton. Big loss, because even though he did go in the end, but he had they, he did put that glue together for them. Uh, well, they still have the strength there, too, like Lyndon oh, Dykes, yeah. Elias Chair, uh, Stephen Johansson still there as well. Tyler Roberts from Leeds. Yeah, they brought him in. Good pace up front, him and Chair. Good pace up front. He doesn't really score too many goals though for me, uh, but we'll have to wait and see ultimately what happens on that one. So I think it'll be an all right season for him. Then 15th, massive drop off for this side as well. Huddersfield, Carlos Corberan has gone, of course, who really rocked them up the table last year. Uh, they've lost a few key players as well, uh, but they'll just about stabilise. They need to find the goals from somewhere. I think for me, they have the best keeper in the championship in Lee Nichols, but they just need that little bit of extra quality for me. So 15th Huddersfield. Then 14th, uh, thinking about putting them higher, but just around 14th, I've gone for Millwall. Gary Rowett is just a standard championship manager. who's just managed everyone, hasn't he? Uh, they've lost Jed Wallace now as well. Uh, they just need that little bit of spice for me to propel. And from, to be honest, uh, the teams between where I've put 13th and 1st, I just think are a little bit better than Millwall at the moment. So we'll just have to wait and see. I reckon if there's one team that's going to finish higher than um, a lot that I've put below, it will be Millwall. I could even see them breaking into the top 10, to be honest. But yeah, Millwall 14th. In 13th, another one who's finished a bit lower. I've gone for Blackburn. Tony Mowbray has left, of course. John Del Tomasson, or however you say it, Thomason, or something like that. He has come in uh, to the helm at Blackburn. Uh, he's had a terrible record um, with managerial wise, not too experienced, only had jobs in and around Norway, um, sort of like an Ole Gunnar Solskjaer uh, before he came to Cardiff. Um, but they have the squad there, Ben Burton Diaz if he can stay fit, uh, Lewis Travis is another one as well, and Sam Gallagher, but if they yeah, can keep their main, the main core of their squad fit, they could propel up the table, but yeah, Bradley Dack, he's, good. he's always seems to be injured, doesn't he, with his quality, but keep it together, they can push up the table, but it relies on injuries from, and also they need to improve that squad depth for me as well. Then in 12th place, we've got Hull City, 
finally having a takeover after all those years with the Alums, terrible owners they were as well. Uh, they've made some great signings as well. Jean-Marc Seri, uh, absolutely atrocious at Fulham. Remember when he was being linked with Barcelona at some points as well. And also signing Cynic as well, recently a good winger. And I believe they also signed a striker today as well. So yeah, really good signings uh, from Hull City. Uh, another team I think could possibly finish higher, but yeah, really difficult to predict this year, as I keep saying. Uh, well, yeah, it's good to see Hull having a uh, good season in the Championship after a long time, to be honest. From my 17th to 12th, all of these teams could be middle oh, yeah, steps. So I've got for Stoke in 17th position, as you say, a little bit mad. Joe Allen going to Swansea, even Swansea, but even with him out there, he, 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 he didn't Losing really play experience. a massive, yeah, the experience, one of the massive key, uh, key player for them, really was he last season, a lot of play, other players going, Dowerty's another big Tom loss Mintz as well, going out, of course he went up to, well, joining his father at yeah. Reading, not, not a great loss really, but Bennett Afobi so maybe well. up front going to Millwall, bit of a blow there, but I don't really rate Afobi that much, in 16th position, Probably a little bit of a surprise. I've gone for Coventry. Just le um, learned today that Liam Kelly, their captain, yeah. has suffered a, an injury in a pre-season game, so it looks like he's going to be out for a, a period of time. Uh, Callum O'Hare could be going to Burnley, although Coventry have slapped a £6 million price tag on his head. So whether that one gets finalised... Yeah, I don't think they're going to set into a rival either because they're going to be both competing for playoffs. Possibly, maybe. possibly, but, um, you know, Burnley could flex their muscles. They've got the parachute yeah. payments and everything. So uh, I think Coventry will have a little bit of a drop off this season. And talking about drop offs, I've actually put Huddersfield in 15th position. It looks mm -hmm. like they are losing or lost um, O'Brien to Nottingham Forest and possibly Toffolo as well at the, at the time of recording. So Huddersfield, a bit of a shocker there, I think everyone. But I think last season everyone was predicting them to uh, to go down. So, yeah, um, sort of. Um, of they sort of done a Swansea from what happened mm. to them last season when they uh, finished in the playoffs under Steve Cooper got the playoff final yeah. of course he then goes uh, and then they just absolutely fall down the table don't they that's right so in 14th position gone for Blackburn Rovers another one of the likes of Diaz in firing uh, Gallagher as Gallagher, well yeah. then I can see, see Blackburn as kind of sort of mid table injuries I think will be the main yeah one mid table obscurity for them in 13th position I think Hull City uh, new owners a lot of investment uh, as you say Seri coming in and um, a few other players as well and come January they could uh, you know pump some more into them I'm not sure how that would be with FFP and all that but uh, looking looking a little bit uh, better than they were last season I continue push up the table for them and in 12th position like you Nathan I've gone for sort of QPR in that mid table dropping off themselves Beal taking the helm was up there in Rangers under Steven Gerrard and Aston Villa. So in 11th, I have gone for the mighty Bluebirds, Cardiff right. City. I think they'll do a lot better than they did last season. However, Cardiff's weakness at the moment, at the time of recording, we've only got really two recognised strikers, and Isaac Davis um, currently injured, um, Harris up front, and Waters. Not sure if they'll cut it. Can't really carry this Cardiff side up front. Uh, mid, middle midfield and everything on the wings looks to be strong. Really strong. Probably yeah. the, the strongest section of the team. And in defence, okay, the full fullbacks or wing backs looking good as well. Not too sure about the centre of defence. Kapir yeah. has come in from West Brom, young sort of uh, def central defender. Looks decent. And who who's going to? Uh, partner him we're not too sure but uh, I think Cardiff will have a, a better season I've got the, I think the potential they'll have some really good games this season home and away but I don't think unless Tan comes up with some money and brings in some real decent strikers then the, you know we could push towards the playoffs yeah. but I think it's going to be in around that uh, that mid-table uh, position what am I doing for 10th position? Can't believe I'm actually tipping Swansea to finish above this Cardiff. Ridiculous. Maybe yeah. I can give th this the kiss of death and maybe it'll be yeah. Rolls Royce. I know why you've done hopefully. that. Yeah. So I'm actually tipping, Jack fans, Swansea to finish above Cardiff. Only by one place. I think potentially Swansea can beat any team in this division. However, they do have a lot of off days as well. They didn't finish the, the season too well last year. Lost two and drew four of their last six matches of the season. Joe Allen coming back. 
to Swansea is a, is a good sign, and especially with Flynn Downs uh, leaving to go with West Ham. Swansea, they'll bore their opposition to death with the way they play, etc. Yeah. Sometimes it'll look really good. Other times, it was like Fulham from a few years ago, oh, where yeah. it was oh, it was terrible. But I've got Swansea finishing tenth position. Um, in ninth, I've gone for Preston. I could actually see Preston go into the playoffs, but um, with the quality of teams above them, I think Preston will be knocking on the door. Brady has come in, yep. and he looks a, a decent player for Preston. I've seen him in, in um, pre-season for them, looks decent. And in eighth position, unlucky for Luton, because I think they are a decent team, and they have improved with a number of players coming in. Mm. Cardiff fans... Sheffield United fans all, all know about Af Alfie Doherty and he'll be um, a good addition to their squad but I can just see them missing out on the playoffs but in seventh position I have gone for just missing out on the playoffs Millwall now they could actually put, Bold prediction yeah I, they could actually go make the playoffs good last season they're going to be very very difficult to beat yeah. yet again but I've got Millwall just missing out in 7th position so 11th position I've gone for Coventry City for me uh, if you keep the likes of Callum O'Hare of course I've got, I got yeah. a feeling you will mainly because A the price tag and B I can't see um, you guys sell, selling him to a rival in the division as well um, if Victor Yorker is aka if you watch my streams from lockdown the cucumber man if he scores um, he keeps firing then he'll get you up the table as well it's 50-50 really and if you keep that squad gelling then Coventry could be just about breaking into the top 10 then in 10th position I've gone for Preston really building uh, the last couple of years bringing in Ryan Lowe of course from yeah. uh, Plymouth he was absolutely superb at Plymouth if I recall getting his players in as well he's got a good project going on there at Preston he's going to have him playing some nice football as well Ben Woodburn Ben Woodburn Freddie Woodman as well mm -hmm. good signings uh, Robbie Brady of course for all free from Bournemouth um, and getting rid of loads of the Deadwood as well which no one has done for years at Preston which is great to see in ninth place I've gone for the Jack I, I had to do this um, yeah Flynn Downs as you said has gone that's a massive loss in midfield mm -hmm. for them bringing in Joe Allen I'm not, I'm not bothered by that to be no. fair since we've had Craig Bellamy we'll always support the Welsh boys of course it's just that style of play and the way they ended last season as well they do like to leak a lot of goals and they just fold up like a deck chair on the counter attack and notice a lot as well and honestly I've seen some absolutely mind boggling tweets the last week I think the one I saw that someone said Joe Pro was worth 60 million he's a good player but not not worth that much I, uh, 15 to 20 at a push maybe and then so he said that Harry Darling was apparently going to captain the England side in a year or two or in a few years I should say I was like what uh, but moving swiftly on 8th position I've gone for Cardiff City our team first time in a while have not predicted us to finish in the playoffs I mean after last season's absolute disaster class I don't think anyone can blame you for me it's a long process yeah it's, it's a transition two, season really maybe three seasons this is going to have to be more signs can be expected I'm putting us in eighth quite high up because I think we're going to get a striker within we the next week 100% need a striker made some brilliant signings Jamelo Collins looks yeah. absolutely brilliant in pre-season Touchwood haven't lost yet yeah, in pre-season either we're going to Swindon mm. on the weekend uh, and yeah get our strike room probably think we can get about three or four more in as well so really? just gonna have to wait and see but eighth card of city and then seventh just missing out on the playoffs prepare the keyboards people Norwich City what, what? I know okay. hear me out Dean Smith coming down to the championship good championship manager did he push teams up into like the top two he got me around the playoffs a didn't villa. really knock him on he did well at villa it's completely saved their season of course brentford didn't really do much i mean grant hanley's still knocking around as captain in defense the defense does really worry me i think most out of the team daniel farker he had this weird way of playing in championship football just waiting for the team to make mistakes and then break them down can't do that in the Premier League as we've seen it fail and it'll be interesting to see what style of play Norwich will, pl uh, will play in the Championship now 
Team Pookie, will he be still around next season? Will he be will he be as prolific as before? Yeah, Isaac Hayden coming in as That's well. A That's a really good sign in too. Um, and Todd Cantwell's back as well after they sent him to Bournemouth for some reasons. I don't I don't know about Norwich. I just have a funny feeling about them to be honest. So that's my 11th to 7th done. Right, so playoffs time. In 6th position, I've gone for Burnley. It is, of course, Vincent Company's first management job aside from Anderlecht in Belgium. Uh, they've got a really strong squad, in all fairness to them. Hartwood Bellis is a great loan signing from Manchester City. Van Veghorst has gone, but das on loan. Uh, if you keep Cornet, McNeil, I believe, clubs are sniffing around for him as well. And Ashley Barnes as well. He's going to be ridiculous in the Championship Possibly. if you can keep all of him and keep him fit. Yeah. Yeah, Strong squad, lot, losing a lot of players as well, and getting rid of some of the Deadwood too. Tarkovsky's gone, Eric Peters has gone, uh, just to name a few. Nick Pope's gone as well for 10 million. Yeah, they got many uh, coming in, they got the gone. parachute payments. Yeah. So spend, spending that Josh Cullen 2.7 million from Andalect, you know, they, they're flexing, Good aren't they? Good signing as well, and they've uh, quite a bit of money as well, mm. 20 well, about 30 million they've got uh, from uh, sales, so they've got, they got money to spend there, Burnley. Yeah. Um, in fifth position, Massively bold one here. You know I'm going to get a lot of people no, on the keyboards on. in this one. Luton Town. Wow. I think they're going to build on well from last season. Nathan yeah. Jones really rate him as a manager. I think he's the one of the best managers in the division. Not saying that because he's from the Valleys uh, and a Cardiff fan as well. Uh, Collie Woodrow coming in is a really yeah, good, good signing. Good They've made some brilliant signings in fairness to him as well. Alfie Doherty, another player I really rate. Um, came on into Cardiff last season. Good on his day. Uh, Louis Watson coming Coming in, even Horvath, solid keeper choice as well as he develops. Uh, Luke Freeman, another great sign in on a free. So, so yeah, I think they're gonna have a re another really good season, but it's injuries yet again. They need to we need to watch out for. Now in fourth position, I was tempted to put them a bit lower than this because of one slight problem, and that is West Bromwich Albion. For me, Steve Bruce. <sighs> You need to get rid of him, I think, to push just to push up. I think he will end up getting sacked at some point. Uh, they've got a great squad as well, some great players. Callum Robinson, Diane Garner, of course, Alex Mowat, John Swift coming in, Jed Wallace coming in as well. Uh, and for me, Daryl DK up front coming in from Orlando City after being on loan at Barnsley. I think this will be his sort of breakout season at West Brom after he had that. Um, well, he came in on January, didn't he? So he's going to have that time to uh, pop in, really. So, yeah, fourth for West Brom for me. And then third place have gone for Sheffield United. They've made some good signings in all fairness to them as well. A lot of people have been tipping Sheffield United um, a fair bit. Tommy Doyle on loan is great for me. Yep. Um, superb at Cardiff last season. Getting rid of um, a few of the uh, Deadwood as well but Goldrick's gone on a free Luke Freeman's gone out on free as well Moussa is gone Ollie Burke's gone so yeah quite a few have gone there they got the squad depth as well I think it's going to be a good season for him but it's Paul Heckenbottom isn't it <laughs> Heck, remember how bad a job he did at uh, who was it Hibernian and that season in the Prem as well when he left and had to come back after the Oris Johanovic so that's my playoffs right there fantastic so my playoffs in sixth position I did have them outside the playoffs, yeah. but I've been tossing and turning with them. I'm actually going to put Burnley in there. Vincent Company, you know, is at Anderlecht, and he did an okay job up there. I think he, Anderlecht finished fourth in that Belgium league last season. Not bad. But they do have Craig Bellamy as assistant manager joining them recently as well, which he's got experience in the championship with the likes of Norwich, Cardiff City as well, playing there. So um, he'll get in amongst them, them players and make some decent signings too. And... Possibly they've got Callum O'Hare in their, in their sights. You never know that they may get him. In fifth position, I've gone for Middlesbrough last season. Of course, they finished just outside the playoffs. I think they'll kick on this this um, this time around. They made some decent sizing signings. However, they do need a striker. If they get that striker, then I can see them definitely being in, uh, in the top six. In fourth position, West Bromwich Albion made a lot of real quality signings this season. Uh, this close season, like you've already said, Swift and uh, Jed Wallace is a, a, an absolute steal from Millwall. But uh, rumours are that Dwight Gale could be on his way to West Brom as well. But there's a whole host of clubs after uh, Dwight Gale. I'm not sure he's something like 32 now. Amazing yes. in the Championship. Wouldn't Can't want really, to be honest. Couldn't really find his feet in the, in the Premier League. And in third position, I was toying with this one as well. I've actually gone for Watford now. 
Rob Edwards, former Welsh international, yeah. did ever so well at Forest Green. Won the league with in, them. in the in the second division. It could be it is a massive step up for him. I know he's played in the in the Championship and the, and, the, and the Premier League as well, I believe. Whether he, he can get in in the, the top two, I'm not too sure. Should be just a good enough for the playoffs I've got them finishing third I don't know if they're going to be able to keep hold of mm. Dennis because there are some rumours I've just been reading earlier on today that Dennis could be going to Nottingham Forest if, for the, if uh, the price is right so that is my playoff position my top two here, Here we, we go. go. Who's going to finish in the top two? I think you can already guess, but I've gone for the Blades. Sheffield United, Paul Heckenbottom at the helm. But uh, they had a real decent season uh, last time out, finishing in fifth position. Finished the, 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 the season strongly with victories against uh, Fulham, where they destroyed them 4-0, QPR and Cardiff. Uh, yeah, I think the Blades are going to be strong. Yeah, made some decent signs. Uh, Tommy Doyle, uh, young midfielder did well in the championship last year Keelan Clark's decent from Newcastle as well so that's my second position and in first position boring probably a bit dull but Norwich City under Dean Smith fantastic manager in the championship um, okay last couple of times they've been in the championship they've had um, Fark in there yeah. and he's taken, they, they change it, change the style a little bit whether that's good enough for them to go straight back at, maybe maybe not I have put them at this moment in time as champions so there are my predictions Nathan your top two interesting my top two quite a bold one for me this one but Middlesbrough Chris Wilder yeah. second season in charge you saw what he did at Sheffield United really turned it around at Middlesbrough last year just missing out on the playoffs as well made some good signings There's Zach Stefan, the goalie from Man City as well. That's a good one coming yeah. in. Ryan Giles yeah, was he's... superb when he was at Cardiff on loan and also did well when he was at Blackburn as well. Got the, out, got the players there as well. Tavernier, McNair, uh, if they can, and McGree as well. If they can keep them as a unit as well, do not lose too much uh, to they have lost Jed Spence now as well, even though he didn't mm. really get into the side. Well, he was on loan, wasn't he, at Forest? So. Of course, yeah. For me, they need a striker as well, just like Cardiff in a way, but... Yeah. Yeah, if they get that striker, they're 100% going straight into the Premier League for me. And then top of the league, I've gone for Watford. As you said, Rob Edwards uh, won the league with Forest Green last season. Good manager for me, considering the budget and what Forest Green had as well. I mean, look at look at Watford's squad. That's all I'll literally say for it. As long as they can keep it together yeah, and don't sell them. Dennis might be going to Forest uh, for 25 million, as you said. But they've still got Ismail Sarr, Troost Ekong, uh, yeah. Kike Femina, uh, Cabaselli. All of this is... a at the time of recording, however, um, so you may have to watch that one. Yeah, and they flexed as well. Mm. So was it Isuf Abeo from um, Chario? Wherever they come mm. from. They do like to sign um, yeah. players from abroad, to be fair to them. And um, Ray Manje Manage from Barcelona. So Mine, wow. to be fair, they do like a Barcelona yeah. signing, just take your eyes back to Delefeu. That's all I'll say. Yes. Um, so yeah, Watford's top of the league for me. Fantastic. So those are our predictions for the whole table of the 2022-2023 season. Before we go, no, Nathan, is there any team that could shock you and get into that playoffs or, you know, someone from mid-table perhaps? Mm. Any team? Um, it's a difficult one for me because it could be anyone in the championship. Mm. If one is going to surprise... <sighs> If one's going, one or two are going to surprise you. It's probably going to be Preston, yeah. Coventry, uh, and a lot of people have been saying it. But Swansea, and it pains me to say it, but I don't think they will. No, um, it's their defence mainly and their consistency and style of play. Few factors in that, but who knows? It's the Championship. Anything yeah. can happen. Yeah, I think Millwall or Preston could push it. And Millwall as well. Oh yeah. Yeah, Millwall decent. Um, below that, going down Huddersfield. I think they'll have a drop off this season, yeah, but they do have some quality down. players. Zorba Thomas is, is a real good good player so maybe Huddersfield could drift into the, those but bottom you've got to watch as well for the uh, near the bottom three could you be your Bristol City's mm. your Stokes and maybe your QPR's at a stretch as well mm, probably not QPR but yeah. you need to wait and see but apart from that first manager sacked who's it going to be I've already said mine in Mr well, Michael O'Neill if Watford get off to a sticky start then you know they might need to pull, pull oh, yeah. the trigger on Rob Edwards if not I I don't know maybe if Bristol City Peterson's going to go at some point possibly, possibly. maybe Paul Ince if they have a torrid time at the beginning of the season then they're in the relegation zone in say September October then you could see um, them pull the trigger 
back to business. Season starts on Friday the 29th of July. This weekend, we're going to Swindon. Will there be a vlog? There will be pre-season friendly first one of the season. We haven't been able to get to the uh, the last couple of in Shrew. Well, Shrewsbury was midweek, wasn't yeah. it? So we couldn't get to that. And we were on holiday. And then we were away so. for the last two as well for uh, Cheltenham. And yeah. Stuff. Thanks for joining us. Make sure you leave your prediction table in the comments below and we'll read each and every one of them yeah. and uh, maybe somebody will get a shout out in the next video. But for now, We'll bid you farewell. We will be bringing out our Premier League predictions as well for the, this coming season and next week or so. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching this very long video. We'll see you real soon.